Yeah. All right, welcome everyone to our uh, Council of Aging Board meeting of uh, March the 6th, uh, 2023. And before we begin, I think we should do a little introductions of who everybody is here. So Kathy can make sure she's got her list Get right. the right people. <laughs> and, and while you're introduced, remember everybody has mics. Please use the mic so we can pick it up on the camera. Okay, so I guess we'll start with uh, Mary in the corner of the room. Mary Schaffer, Gloria Tarkey, Terry Hillman, I'm the uh, treasurer. Rhonda Metta, chairman. Mike Ellis, director. Kathy O'Brien, secretary. Paul Leon, vice chair. <laughs> Kenny, pull the mic right up and introduce yourself. Just say your name. Oh, Kenneth Fournier. Tracy Hutchinson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, did everybody look over the minutes of last month's uh, uh, meeting? No, Mike put them on the internet and on email, so a lot of us read it that way. Do you have any questions on it? Any discussion? Corrections. I guess we're doing okay. <laughs> okay, do I have to entertain a motion to accept them? Oh, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep correcting you on this. We're just entertaining the motion. Yeah. Because somebody may say now we don't want to accept. No. Oh, okay. so entertain a motion. <laughs> entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept. I'll I'll second. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Now any discussion? Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Any opposed? We're, we're still um, you know, going through the process. All right. Uh, let's see. Next thing on, the, on our agenda is going to be the treasurer report. <laughs> oh, it's a good day today. <laughs> Terry, can I have you pull that mic right up close? Yes, yes. Right here in the report, right there. I was an item behind. Okay. Yes, the, the treasurer's report is in your packets and it's for the period ending uh, February 28, 2023. The first, on the first page is the general fund listed. Um, Rob Cormier has been taken off of this uh, report because as you know he's left us however we will have to have a, a, a salary adjustment before the end of the year because of Rob's elimination when you leave the city position you get if you're lucky you get money that has built up like for instance vacation crew vacation or crew sick leave and so that has to that has to come out of, of our budget because of what, what was approved today. Um, but everything else seems to be in very good shape. That will be taken care of. Uh, expenses are in good shape. Uh, and we are in good shape to get us through to um, July uh, 30 days at the time to June 30. <laughs> I have to go over that little line. So the general fund, is there any questions on the general fund? Rob? Just, just one point, when she said Rob's been taken off, Rob's salary is no longer being accrued in our uh, finance report because it's no longer with us. But that position expense is still showing and will incur additional expenses when we bring the new person on. There will be a, an adjustment, what she was referring to is that, um, is that payout at the end of the year. So they'll add that into our budget to cover the payout. Any, yeah, any other questions? I just want to find out. All right, perfect. Thank you. Uh, and, and just below that is our gift fund. Um, during February, we received $750. That was a gift from Rotary, which was very nice. And so our ending balance in the gift fund is $57,425.43. 
and uh, that is a gift money, and we are not expending any of it right now, but with the new building, <coughs> we may have some memorials or some things that we will, and we will take from the, take from the gift fund. And, uh, and then, the next full page is the revolving fund. <coughs> In February, we were very good. <coughs> we did not spend very much in the revolving fund. Uh, and, uh, and so it does have a healthy balance. Anytime any of the uh, bingo people or other organizations that may request funding, um, they, that's taken care of out of the revolving fund. And the driver's ed, or you can see everything, everything is listed there. Are there any questions on the <coughs> revolving fund? Just an overall uh, observation. We are uh, $108 less than when we started at the beginning of the year, even with $21,962,000 of expenses. So um, we've been able to, to really balance expenses with income, which is what we're supposed to do. So that's not bad, $108 uh, less than where we started. And, and we have a healthy balance going forward. And uh, we're not obligated to spend it all by June 30. In the old, old days, you had to, you know, keep it down to a $20,000, but we're okay now. So we have plenty, uh, plenty of funds for activities and, uh, and any expenses that the clubs and all need. And on to the grants. Okay. I have some good news, which Mike will verify. Finally, <laughs> finally, the FY 2021 grant is being closed out. And we will, well, we, we might have it on there next month showing it closed out. But. Yeah, we'll continue to show the, the report as it, as it is now stands. There's, as you can see, no expenses allocated to the FY 21 grant um, for the period of February 2023, but up through January 31st, we did have expenses. So we'll continue to show that report, but there should be no additional expenses. That grant will be closed as of June 30th. That's good. And then the next page is your FY 2022 grant. And that one is going to be zeroed out very shortly. Right? I just have to find $94 in expenses. And then we'll be able to close them. Let's, let's go over to first chapter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that, so then we will just be down to our FY 2023, which is on the last page, uh, grant. And um, in addition to that, however, come July 1, uh, we have been advised that we will be getting our FY 2024 grant. So that'll be good. So we will still have, Mike will still have two grants to take care of. I don't know, he might want to say a few words, so I'll let him, he's better at talking about the grants than I am, so I'll let him talk. Um, yeah, just uh, just for your edification, for the 2021 grant, we carried over $8,343.72, and we spent $8,343.72 out of FY21 out of 22. We carried over 15,952,08. So far, we've spent 14,388,74. Um, so, nope, I lied. We spent 18,857,53. So, um, we're going to be netting that out, you know, shortly at $95 more to expense to allocate or spend. And then the big one is our fiscal year 2023, which we're now in. So far, we've only spent about $7,500 out of that grant. Um, so we have a pretty sizable chunk of change. But folks, I also want to just bring your attention back to page one, which is the um, Council on Aging General Fund. In that general fund, we have allocated about $2,600, um, I'm sorry, $2,500 in expenses for the outreach coordinator. We're changing the way we capture that. That $2,400 will eventually be rolled out of the FY23 grant. So we're, we're really, have an encumbrance right now about $2,500 to cover outreach coordinator through February 28th. That's going to go up through June 30th. So figure about $4,000, $5,000 less than that $56,000 balance on FY23. So yeah, do I, I, think we're in, I think we're in great shape right now. We have um, 
and we have about uh, fifty-six and a half thousand dollars uh, out of really out of FY23 that we can spend on some of the programmatic things that we will certainly need as we gear up for the new location. Um, one last bit of uh, information, Terry alluded to the fact we're going to be getting the grant. The FY24 grant won't actually, we won't see that until after the start of the fiscal year, so it won't happen until after July 1. However, the state legislature and the governor's budget and the house budget, they have uh, put in a request to increase the per capita for councils on aging again this year. So we may see a little bit more than the 63,000 that's been um, that it has been awarded to the city. It really depends on how the budget flushes out. So um, I I think we can anticipate at least the 63, but we really won't know that till um, we really won't know that till September when uh, we get our award notices. Um, so far, this out of the grants, we spent about 18. Well, no, I can tell you exactly 1,576 dollars plus the 2,500 dollars for the um, outreach coordinator. So 4,000 out of all the grants this month. It's pretty good. Any questions? Are there any questions? Michael, be happy to. Uh, I'll try, but you will be happy to answer any questions. Well, and, and, as everybody knows, our fiscal year goes until June 30, and then that closes out this budget, and we get the new figures at the city from the city, and July 1 starts a new year. So I did, uh, we're good to go. I did do some, um, we're, we're going to make some changes. So the, the 358859 that shows up for the, the commander lunch, um, didn't show up in, oh, no, I did make that change. Scratch that, I, I edited it for your, um, your reports. I was able to correct that problem. We're gonna transfer about $509 that was used for apparel from the revolving fund into the 15541 general fund. So um, that will actually increase our revolving fund balance in March, so when you see like it goes up, or it doesn't really get out based on the expenses, it's because we're gonna transfer um, general ledger transfer those expenses. They really should have been under the 15 general fund. And then the last thing, um, if you didn't notice, we we did some um, we did some adjustments for general ledger transactions. We moved $1,962 of expenses from FY21 to FY23 that showed up in the January report that don't show up in the February report because they've been transferred to FY23. So if you look at 21 saying, hey, what happened to that 1962 for the Christmas meal? It's now under the FY23, so we could close out the um, FY21 without deficit. And similarly, we transferred $2,350.49 from FY21 to FY23 for the outreach coordinator positions. That was an expense that showed up. Um, we had allocated too much of that expense to the FY21. We had to readjust that. They all show up in your financial report, but I'm just telling you, if you look at your finance report from last month and you're like, hey, where these expenses go? They now show up in the FY23. There is an additional page uh, in there for you to look at, and it's, it's not really part of the finance report per se, but I like to take a look at where we are in terms of expenses and what our projections are for the rest of the year. And I think that last sheet in the uh, finance report gives us a good indicator as to uh, what our expenses are going to be over the course of the next 16 weeks and where we're going to stand uh, from uh, projected to actual. So um, in all of our accounts, with the exception of the outreach coordinator, we're showing pretty much a surplus so uh, you know, we'll do some line item adjustments among the salary accounts at the end of the year to uh, to cover the cost of the the termination um, you know fee for, for he wasn't terminated he left on his own but that salary expense and then some line adjustments in the uh, operation side of it. So I think we're going to be about um, we're going to be about thirty one hundred dollars in. The negative for salaries at the end of the day, once we account for that $7,500 in salary adjustments, um, and then a positive balance of about $4,400 in the operation. So we'll be about 
if, if I'm guessing maybe around 3,000 um, in um, you know, positive at the end of the year. But there's still a whole year to go. Utilities, like this month, our utilities, our gas costs alone came in at $2,000. So um, I don't know what that's going to look like for you know, when we pay the bills in March or February, what, that, what that's going to really go. But I think we're in good shape. You know, the bottom line is I think we're in really good shape. I think we're going to come in at or under budget on the general fund, which is really the other uh, accounts are, are fully flush, so we don't have any chance of negative spending on those. Comments, thoughts? Any, any other thoughts or questions? Thank you, Mike, for helping me. How many of you have headaches after the this this morning? I, I will tell you this, um, you know, John Richard has given me a lot of training. I really appreciate uh, John and Jackie from the auditor's office for all the, you know, the last year, all the support they've given us that we're able to do this kind of comprehensive report because we never did this before. So, and I also like the fact that you're able to look at, you know, our financial standing, um, you know, make some recommendations or any, any suggestions that you think are prudent and pertinent at the time. So. Thank you. And of course, Kevin. So she comes in the Friday before our meetings. We review all the finances. We go through the nitty gritty. Uh, every single time we meet, she picks something up that's important to bring to this board. So I appreciate that. Moi. Moi. Yeah. Yeah. I do all the analysis. I do all of the. Yeah. And it ties out perfectly to Munis. So yeah. Yeah. The colors. Paul Brownie. Yeah. Well, uh, who covers the insurance uh, operation? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So the insurance for the entire city is one policy. We don't have all of our separate. So the city um, has kind of blanket coverage on all the different aspects. So the city pays the insurance. Similarly, they pay for the plowing, the plowing and, and um, you know, those kind of maintenance type things. The general stuff, if we had major repairs to the roof, as you know, last year we had the sewer line that had to be replaced, that came out of repairs and maintenance budget for the senior center. But the overall, that's a public lot, it's not the senior center lot, so the city covers that. Um, I think some of the other stuff, they, oh, the telephones, they cover our telephone costs. Our, well, no, we pay our internet and, and uh, television. So, so they cover the, the phones. Um, some of the operational costs, but not a lot. If there was a major event which cost forty, fifty thousand dollars If there was a what? A major event of some kind. Yep. We, we go to the city and ask for a um, adjustment to the budget. So, so I was just worried, you, know, you, you wind up with $8,000 here at the end of the year. Yep. And, you know, that could be wiped out in, the, in a heartbeat. So. Absolutely, it could. Um, so two years ago, not, not FY22, but FY21, we had um, some substantial uh, repairs and maintenance costs. We had some issues with the boilers. We had, of course, the downstairs sewer project was a $11,000 um, hit right off the top. We had unit ventilators. We, um, I think what the other, there were four big ones. So the city covered the, um, the deficit. Anything related to that kind of stuff. Of course, they will might be to the fire. So if we go in and ask for adjustment, if we ask for some additional funds, supplemental budgets, what it's called, they're going to want to know why. Why did we go that much? One of my major concerns I had right from the beginning of the year, but that actually didn't come to fruition, was my overtime budget. And some members of the board can look at our overtime budget is $500. Um, in the first storm, first two storms, we, we Ate about three hundred dollars of that. So this, in the last week and a half, we would have probably more than doubled what my old time budget was established. Um, when staff come in, they they regardless of how much time they spend, they have to be paid for three hours. So three hours a time and a half, up to a Saturday or a Sunday it's double time or holiday it's double time. So we'll go through $500 pretty quickly. But thankfully that didn't happen. I was nervous. Um, always am. I always ask for like, you know, $40,000 overtime budget. I'm being facetious, but just to make sure I don't go into deficit because I don't like to be in that position. But uh, similarly, I would go to them and ask for, for an adjustment. Yeah. And, and didn't the city 
give us air purifiers and some other equipment that they did, they yeah. had to ask for, and they were very good about supplying them different items? We were able to obtain funding to buy uh, 60 new chairs, um, 15 more tables, a food warmer, an ice machine, air purifiers um, that were all above and beyond what our normal city uh, budget was two years ago. So, um, not an issue. So they do listen when Mike comes in. <laughs> yeah, they've been pretty responsive. But I, I'll tell you, Paul, it's a great question because it causes me concern. You know, every single month I look at it and say, all right, I, as most of you who've ever, ever had to manage a budget will do, look at it and say, oh, crikey, how do we keep this, um, how do we keep this cost contained? And over time, it's not just about snow. Uh, if somebody is working a COVID clinic, then you know, we would have to pay them the extra time they're here to work that clinic. If they're doing a program at night, we pay them the extra time. In, in years past, we do several meetings at night that the staff would cover that would come under that overtime budget, but we've been able to manage that a little bit differently in the last couple of years. Okay. <clears throat> do we have any uh, discussions? Do we have discussion on the budget or on the budget report? Okay. Somebody accept it? Entertain the motion. Entertain the motion to accept? No. Nope. Okay. 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 Okay
uh, for folks that are going to be joining us. We are maxed out. We're capped on that, as has been the trend lately. We're maxing out on all of our programs, which I think is really exciting. On March 16th, we have breakfast with Badge, and the detective unit is going to be coming in with the Garden Police Department talking about some of the most recent scams. And this, is, this has been unbelievable, the number of uh, seniors who've been impacted recently by all kinds of scams, uh, whether it's the romance scam or the Medicare scam, there's just a ton out there. We're trying to get the education awareness out in our community and really appreciate the partnership we have with the DA's office and with Garden Police Department. March 17th is our knockout pool tournament. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We had about 15 people last year play, uh, and they loved it. So I'm hoping those 15 plus come. We would like to get a good crowd for that. Of course, we will serve uh, some food. Last year we did it at 11 o'clock, so we served lunch food. This year we're doing it at 9 o'clock, so we'll have some breakfast items for folks. Uh, looking for some people to come in and maybe cook some egg sandwiches or something like that. Uh, maybe green egg sandwiches because it's St. Patrick's Day. And of course, nothing goes better with green egg sandwiches than a nice hot cup of coffee. I was going to say something else, I did. Um, our cold basket, I just want to give a shout out to Paul Leone and Paul Crowley, our two Pauls today who are doing just tremendous jobs. They have both stepped up to do some new programs here at the center, our cold basketry. We weren't really sure what was going to happen. Uh, we, we maxed out plus. We overbooked it in the last session. Um, and Paul now has a lot of gray hairs as a result of that. We're going to do a second session for those folks that came in February. We'll do a second session for them in March. And then we're going to have rolling programs, a two-day um, workshop for folks to do cold basketry. It's been, we have a waiting list, so that's great. And similarly, we have the Writers Club. Every Monday, and so I, Paul, uh, came in a little late today, he hosts the Writers Club here at the Garden Senior Center. And we've been getting a half a dozen folks at that. Um, it's pretty good, so showing a lot of interest. Again, not really sure where it was going to go, but because um, we were able to offer it, we were able to get people including I thank both Pauls for, for their time with that. On March 21st, we have Travel Time Tea, one o'clock program with Colette and Diane Pellet talking about our programs coming up, Fuel for the Future, March 22nd. It's all about food, nutrition, and how as seniors, we need to eat a little bit differently to give us the energy we, we need, but also to keep our, our lives in balance. Um, we're doing a new program in March this year, the Vietnam Veterans Day program. So this is to really commemorate and honor those folks who served in the military during the Vietnam conflict. Um, the Easter Basket Meal on April 5th is a drive through at 12 o'clock. We're over capacity on the Easter Basket Meal. Uh, and then a few programs coming up. Uh, in April, we have Crafts with Jane and the Haywood Wound Center uh, Care Program. So they're coming in to talk about wound care and the services provided by that department. Two other quick things just to note. Our stand for seniors, we offered again in January of this year. We did it, we started it last year. We maxed out on participation on that again this year, but luckily, through our partners at the Gardner CAC, we were able to pick up another 75 buckets. So we'll be able to continue that program easily for the next three years. We do about 25 or 30 every year, so that's kind of cool. And then trips and excursions, uh, since since the beginning of time, we've never planned this far out, but we have all of our trips and um, one day and multiple day trips planned for the entire year. So uh, from now into January, we're all booked and cooked, and that allows us to promote them and get more interest, although we've had great interest this past year. If anybody wants to go to Ireland, Britain, or uh, Italy, those, oh, and um, Alaska, those are the four big, big trips this year, so if you look into get away, get away with uh, the Garden Senior Center from joining us. Services on Wednesday, March 1st. Um, what am I gonna check that again? Yeah, March 1st. We had our first session with the Benefits Enrollment Specialist. Of course, it was the first time, first day. We spent that time really getting the, the BES um, acclimated to who some of the agencies are. We made some introductions with other nonprofits that would, would likely refer. So our Benefits Enrollment Specialist went with the Gardner Housing Authority, but all house veteran service agent, human resources, um, and a couple of CDC and a couple other nonprofits to let them know that this person is available on the first Wednesday of every month from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And they will assist a senior, 60 years of age and older, or somebody under 60 who has a disability 
with any application, any application. So if they're looking for the utility discount, come on in. If they're looking for the uh, Comcast discount, come on in. If they need to make an appointment with RMB, come on in. If they're looking for a snack or a hip or um, fuel assistance or whatever, come on in. So in addition to those programs we offer regularly, the DES will be here to help seniors with kind of more global applications. For those of you who don't know, we have RCAP Solutions, who's here once a month doing housing consultations and advising. We have DTA and HOPE here doing uh, SNAP and HIP, which is a Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, as we like to refer to it, and it is not food stamps, right? So that's to help people pay for some of their uh, more nutritious groceries. We have a pharmacist, we have nurses here, um, we have a legal person who comes in and does um, some just general answer questions, and we have LPL Financial. We started last month, he's a financial advisor connected with GFA, uh, LPL Financial Policy Fabric, who did office, I had been doing office hours the last uh, two months. Um, we just started a grief support group. We have obviously the caregiver support group uh, hosted by CSO, Clinical and Support Options of Garden, they're doing a great job. And we are getting a continuous number of people at that meeting. So it started off a little rocky, but it's really solid. The LGBTQ group is no longer located in the senior center. We went to a more neutral location, a little bit more anonymous. Um, and that has been seeing 18 to 20 folks at every meeting. I've been to that cafe, has been robust. Um, again, probably 25 to 30 folks at every uh, third Friday meeting. So if you're looking for some participation in those groups, we invite and encourage you to come as part of the Vet to Vet Cafe. This month we're doing the Vietnam Veterans uh, Recognition Program. And then last but not least, personnel. I just want to give a shout out to all the folks who do such a great job. Uh, first of all, our instructors, Pauline Richard, who does our line dancing, Stephanie Lazard, who does our yoga on Monday and Tuesday, Amy LeBlanc, who does a terrific job of fun and fitness, our new Friday chair yoga, Nina Becky, and our new Friday mat yoga instructor, Sandy Marcel, um, who do kind of those exercise and health and wellness programs on a continuous basis. And the last big one is our facilities maintenance manager. It's of no surprise or news to anyone in this room that in February of 2023, uh, Rob left to take a position with Gardner Housing Authority as a maintenance supervisor. Um, we wish him well. He certainly was a big part of this team. Loved to working with him. Miss him dearly. Interesting note, by the way, if you haven't noted, I'm going to make this observation for you all. We didn't get a, a major snowstorm until he left. And then we got three. Um, Thanks, Rob. Uh, no, I, I, I just imagine what, what a great asset he's going to be to the housing authority. As a result, we are now in the throes of, um, we've advertised, we've gotten resumes, and we're reviewing those resumes, and hopefully in the next week having interviews. Um, my, my best case scenario is, after we do those, do those interviews, we'll make an offer, give that person a week to um, review the offer, if they accept, we're probably talking two weeks for them to give notice. So we're a minimum of four to five weeks out from having a maintenance person on board. Yeah. So that um, and it it's a it's yeah it's a it's a little um, it's a little distracting. But I mean we've been able to manage. Um, so I don't really see you know five weeks having a major negative impact. Um, but it is a little bit of a, a little bit of a. Balancing act. Overtime. Yeah, yeah, lots of overtime. Uh, so that's that's pretty much my report. Try to do as good as possible. Any questions? Anything out of the ordinary that I missed? How about on junior high? What's going on at Washington? So, um, so the 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 folks that are kind of managing the the uh, project, who uh, include kind of first and foremost John Zlotnick, representing John Zlotnick. Um, he's really kind of going gangbusters on getting it going, getting the scope of work and the contractors in. But I still um, am projecting a moving date of, of late 2023. So sometime I believe between September and November. Um, if we get in earlier, that would be awesome. If we get in later, that would be a bummer. But there's a lot of work. It's, you 
some of it's cost effective, but there's a, a lot of kind of infrastructure like the bathrooms need to be renovated and we have to make those ADA accessible. And interestingly, for the health fair and another program, we had a senior show up in a wheelchair that we couldn't get in the building um, because the doors were constructed in 1970 and they're up. And they were for, I, I guess they were built for preschool kids, so they're about six inches wide. They're like so silly um, how narrow they are. So I think maybe they're two and a half feet, maybe. They're certainly not three feet, so the wheelchair couldn't get in. Um, and so that's been a, a, a major um, you know, issue that we brought to the attention, and I am certain, I'm very confident that that all of those issues will be addressed. They're going to change out the front doors and the side doors to make sure that they're handicapped accessible. So those are the kinds of things that have to be done, and that not only does that take time to do the specs and do the, the installation, but we also have to bid it. And people have to do the work. That's, that's the, the pain. Yeah. But good question. And, so we've been down, for those of you who don't know, we got a donation of a brand new living room set for the, the new kind of lounge library area. It's gonna be really, that's gonna be really nice. Um, folks have heard that movement, it's probably 10 times a day. Yeah. 10 times a day people ask, hey, how's the move going and we're moving in? So that says to me that people are excited and in eager for us to go to this new location. I quite honestly was nervous, but no, there's a lot of, a lot of um, buzz around it. We had another group last week, the 21st of February, we had another large group and uh, a lot of good feedback. Yeah, a lot of really good feedback. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Michael, and that. Go ahead. I, I, maybe this has been addressed, but on the um, Waterford building, since we'll be sharing the building, how is the utilities going to be handled? As I understand it, Gamma is picking up the entire cost of utilities in that building. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Tracy Hutchinson, uh, the CEO of Gamma, sits at Thank you, on, on our board. No, similarly to how we do it now. So I think, you know, I, I'm speaking way out of turn. The answer truly is I don't know. But let me tell you how the model works here. As part of the support of the Gardner CAC, we give them the housing. So we, certainly to, work the, to how those expenses are covered here, we cover their costs. Um, they pay for their own internet, they pay for their own telephone, they pay for their own insurance, but they generally the housing, the infrastructure, bricks and water, we cover. I don't know, I don't think, and Trace, maybe you know better, I don't think the electricity is going to be split. I think the city is going to continue to cover that. They cover it now as part of that. Similarly, the fuel costs will be covered by the city. General maintenance, each organization will be responsible for their own areas, um, but those types of broad expenses, I believe, are going to be covered entirely by the city. So, in other words, we're kind of like the landlord, and they're like the, the city is the landlord. They're yeah. absolutely the city. Right. Now, remember, I'm just a component of the city. So, um, from a from a plan perspective, there are a lot of folks that have have some kind of interaction here. For example, Jen Demick is the treasurer for the city of Gardner. She, she maintains and oversees the insurance and liability claims and, and stuff like that. We don't handle that, so we, we get it off. It's the financial transactions that we offer. So there's a lot of other folks that are in the mix. Um, the city will clearly be the landlord, and I believe they're doing leases for all the tenants. Right? Yes. Yep, yep. So yes. that's Paul. Uh, uh, just a the side note, National Grid's going to be charging over 33 cents a kilowatt hour next year. Yep. I was able to get electricity from my house for 19 cents. But um, seniors out there may be getting whacked. And we should maybe have a meeting about those costs for our, our constituents. Paul's like, you read my mind, but we already did it. So we had a huge meeting the first week of December. We had um, Unitil here, we had National Grid here, we had, hold on, um, the city's vendor. Does anybody remember what the name of the city is? I'm sorry, they're going to build a farm. Yeah, yeah. 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 is it Xterra? No, so, not Xterra, no. Um, so we had them here, we had Mock Energy here, we had Salvation Army, Good Neighbor Fund here, and we had one other. So we talked about fuel assistance, we talked about um, other types of, of assistance for seniors, but then we had National Grid, we had Unitel, and we had our third party supplier who is part of the aggregate program for all the residents of Gardner. So if you walked in, 
you get the bulk buying power of the city of Gardner on um, energy, which made a lot of sense. The program was, was very well attended. It was, it was amazingly well attended, and we got a lot of info. But we did that deliberately in anticipation of the increases. So twice a year, the utilities are able to adjust their, let me, let me back up. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts regulates public utilities, Unitel and uh, National Grid of Public. So they're only able to go out and buy their electricity or you know, purchase their electricity from the grid, which let's just pretend it's this big supermarket of electricity. They can only go to the supermarket twice, um, twice a year, December and July. So when they, or December and June. So when they do that, they have, to, they have to buy at the price it is in those two months. Now think about those times, the time frames. December is just before the, the really, before the, the heavy winter season, so there's an anticipation of a cost increase. Oh, and June just happens to be the beginning of the summer. So we always see spikes and, and the rates go up. Our aggregate can buy their power monthly. So they can look at the, the real market, the utility market, and buy for a longer term at a lower cost or short term at a lower cost. So they're not locked into a six month rate. Which is why third party suppliers in many cases are good. But understand as I say this, I really want people to know that there are some scams out there. Don't sign on to anything you're not 100% sure of. Some of these scams include a um, secondary charge. It might be that you have to sign on and use only EBT, direct deposit or direct um, withdrawal from your account. They won't take checks and you can't you know, pay by a cashier's check or any of the other ways you may have paid before. You must it's automatically withdrawn from the account. And by God, if you don't have enough money in your account, they're going to withdraw, and then you're going to have overcharge fees and things like that. So you don't, you can't really um, float your bills. Um, but there are some good ones, and this, the one that this city has has been very, very um, attractive and, and very positive experiences. So you have to opt in for that. If you don't opt in, you don't get the savings. Uh, so they send out the notices, but I would suggest the best way to do that is call the mayor's office. Well, you don't have to call the mayor's office. I take that back. You can call us. I have the contact information. Yep. So yeah, we can get you hooked up if you're not already. Now, how do you know that? If you look at your utility bill for electricity, there's actually two components of your bill. There's the supply, and then there's the distribution. Distribution speaks to the poles, the wires, the meters, any of the physical infrastructure on how that water or electricity flows through. If we were talking about water, we'd be talking about the copper pipes. But we're not, we're talking about electricity, so we're talking about the copper lines. Um, that is the, the distribution. The supply is the actual flow of electricity. Distribution isn't gonna change. Your electrical distributor is always gonna be national grid. They own the poles, they own the wires, they own it. Um, but they wanna be out of the supply business. They don't want to be providing energy to people. They won't have to you know, deal with going to the market twice a month. So they encourage people to get third-party suppliers. When we first started third-party suppliers in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, there were none. In the first year, we moved to 13, and now they're in endless supply. Constellation is one, um, Dominion is another, um, Aguera is a third, and one we use is, is one of the big players. So you get your supply from a third party supply. If you look at your bill, you can see who it is. Um, National Grid may provide the billing for that third party supplier, or you may be billed separately by that third party supplier. You may get a monthly bill from you know, third party supplier X. But generally, National Grid takes on that administrative uh, component. So it's all in one bill. Check it out. If you have any questions, and to the folks that are watching this meeting, Please you know, bring your utility bill in. Yeah. We can see what you have, what it's looking like. Make some referrals to the city's um, utility, and then you can decide. Like we certainly won't make a recommendation, but we'll make a referral. I'd yeah. like to just say something for those of you that get uh, a literal, uh, literally a bill in the mail. I get mine online. But if you get a bit paper bill in the mail, and you turn over your, uh, I believe it's the first page, you can see who your supplier is at the top, I believe, at the second page, who your third party distributor is. You can see that on electronic bills, too. But yeah, if you no, get a paper yeah, bill. I'm just yeah. saying it's yeah. a paper bill. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, Great. You know.
Um, but we will probably do another one as we come to June, because it's the next rate um, consideration by the Commonwealth of, of Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities. So in anticipation of what we expect to be another increase, let's, let's get ahead of it. I like the way you think, Mr. Crowley. I like the way you think. It's getting harder to make a living. I have one last bit of business in your packet. There's an application by Stan Blitzko. I'm good business. Um, Stan, oh, I have two, I'm sorry, two names. So Stan Blitzko is a candidate for um, associate board membership. He's putting his application and asking for consideration to be an associate board member. Stan is from Gardner, so he's in Gardner his whole life. Um, you can see some of his um, organizations for which he belongs. It's pretty active. Um, Retired fireman in the city. Retired fireman, yeah, retired fireman mechanic. So, so with uh, with that, Mr. Chair, uh, would you consider a motion about this application? Sure. Uh, do we have uh, anybody want to make a motion to accept? No. no, not yet. Just make a motion, because they may say no. They may make a motion to decline. <laughs> Just a motion. Motion for what? Just a motion relative to this application. Oh, okay. So we have a motion. To do what? To accept it. To accept it. To accept Stanley, uh, Lutzko, uh, to be an associate board member of the COA. For those of you who didn't hear, uh, Terry Hillman has made a motion to accept Mr. Lutzko uh, as a member of the Council on Aging Associate Board Member. I'll second it. Any discussion on it? All in favor? So voted. Ron will not accept the opposition. Just so you know, he rules with an iron fist. There's no opposition. All right, and the second thing I just want to let you know is we've been approached by two seniors in the community that would like to start working on each friendly community designation. It is a wicked involved process. It is a great designation if we're able to get it, but it takes time and a lot of effort. It's called age friendly. Um, there's another level of designation for a community called dementia friendly. So that's even more rigorous. Um, but age friendly speaks about what are, what are the infrastructure services available to uh, residents of the city who are over 60? Do we really have the types of services they need, including transportation, healthcare? It looks at that whole component. And we make that determination after going through a thorough process. So I have two seniors from the community and stepped up and asked if, if we could do this. Um, but as I always like to do, I like to have somebody from the board take kind of ownership of that. Certainly you'll do that with the assistance of the staff. We, you know, we will um, we'll support that effort in whatever way we can. But if anybody's so inclined, you can speak to Ron after uh, the fact. And then I just want to leave on this note. I am so grateful to the staff here. Um, I don't. I, I try to say it as often as possible, but sometimes I'm remiss in saying it. Uh, I love to work with Rob. He, worked, he did a great job. We're going to miss him. Nancy in the front office does a super job. And on the record, I want folks to know how much I appreciate her. Last week when she was on vacation, we had a, a throng of uh, volunteers in the office. Just, just answer the phones and track the people uh, while I was doing both the facilities and, and, and then the um, kind of deep uh, you know, director kind of stuff. So I really appreciated their support. They worked hard. They did a great job. They did everything from registrations to enrollment. So um, just a shout out to those volunteers. And to let folks know, there are plenty of volunteer opportunities available here. If you're interested, just come in and see me or any of the board members here, and they'll talk about uh, what the opportunities look like. All right, Mr. Chair, that's all I have. If you want to shut me off, I'm going to keep going. Um, well, you know, it's, it's kind of like the um, All-American City designation, right? It has, it has a little bit of impetus, and more importantly, it allows folks that are looking for a place to live an idea that, you know, Gardner really supports our senior citizens. So it's a good way for us to be able to tell folks who live here more about our services, so it's also talking about maybe marketing, education information, development of services for those who live here, and then the ability to, to transmit that or communicate that information to folks who might be considering moving here. So, that's pretty good. Do I know, I don't, 
I, I mean, I know a little bit about it. We're going to have a specialist from uh, Mass Council on Aging come in and from Executive Office of Elder Affairs come in and really talk about what that process looks like, what we need to start, um, and you know what it means at the end of the day. So that'll be an education can come up in the next 30 days. Okay. Um, do we have anything for open discussion? Anything anybody wants to I just want to mention, and I mentioned it to Mike, uh, we're getting close to having our annual meeting, the COA. We're required to have an annual meeting, and that will be coming up the uh, first meeting, in, our meeting in May, that first Monday. And you don't have to do anything at this point. Mike will be taking care of all the paperwork. But I just wanted to mention it, and that's the time when uh, we, can, we have to check our our membership and see who wants to come on the board. But just mentioning it, annual meeting, 1st of May. We'll still be meeting in April, and he'll tell you more about it in April. If you're interested in an officer position, if you are one of the seven appointed members, you're able to serve as an officer. So um, if you're interested, see either myself or Ron, we can kind of chat about what that looks like and start the process. Similarly, um, this is a good time, the annual meeting is a good time to remind folks, and we will be doing it over the course of the next two months. If you have not done your annual ethics training, you need to do that. Um, all of you, associate and call um, appointed members. So if you need that link, I will send that to you, but please make sure you're up to date on your ethics training. Thank you, Terry. Terry, Thank you, Mike. Yes, Paul. I just got two quick things. And it's it been considered with Rob leaving, and I, I have no idea what you're doing now as far as covering. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Well, that answers that question. Um, is there any consideration retained within our budget to maybe get somebody in part time? Yes. On a regular basis, so that if we further down the road have a person like Rob who's full time and they decide to leave. We're not getting short-handed. All right, so now you've changed the question. So the answer is long-term, having a permanent uh, part-time position created in the budget. And the answer to that is no. We've asked them, it's a no. But a temporary part-time person, they said yes. So I can bring somebody on temporarily for the purpose of kind of providing some assistance um, on the facilities. Uh, but once a permanent person is appointed, then um, that person's part-time gig would go away. So if there's no um, provisions for us to maintain that. Obviously, once we're in the new location, we'll look at the model, see how it's working. There's one person left that we need more. Um, but we are exploring a lot of like really good and creative ways to ensure that some of the general maintenance stuff gets done. So um, that maintenance person can really be focused on the big stuff. Well, I'm also thinking, because we're moving to a bigger place, too, yeah. there may be more need maybe for a second person who comes in part. -time. It's going to be different, and that's, I don't know. I that's our wrong. commitment for the first kind of several months. We're going to look at you know what's working. In this facility, one of the biggest uh, challenges is we have to flip the room every hour and a half. So there's a new, you know, when we leave this board meeting, this room's going to have to be flipped for line dancing. And then for, you know, AAR people, or and then for, you know, not AAR people, but the Golden Age meeting and the AARP meeting. And so, Every function has a different setup, and that was one of the primary things Rob did, in addition to doing the major renovations, fixing the roof, snow blowing, um, coordinating the, the, the major repairs to the sewer, putting in, in, in the grease trap, fixing the grease trap, stuff like that. All right, so that, that was his job. We won't have to flip the rooms, but there'll be general, much more general maintenance stuff. So. Um, it's, it'll be interesting just to see how that flows. But right now, I think with one person, we're going to be okay. Along with some of that supplement of creative stuff I was talking about, I think we're going to be all right because we won't have to change or transition rooms. I think it's going to be set up for that function. Now you just mentioned all that makes me think something, yeah. comes, something comes to my mind. What about the grounds of the new building? Is it going to take care of Are we going to have to? Mobile those lines and um, yeah, so they they told me every Saturday morning that no, I'm not, we don't. We don't know the answer to that. My feeling is 
is that the um, the city will continue to pull other permits, and like I mentioned before, there are other permits that support this building. Those other permits will support Wyford Street in the same way. So I believe uh, part, and, well, it used to be Parks and Recreation, but it's all one now, Parks and Recreation, the, the uh, tree service, and DPW will continue to maintain that, that property in terms of cutting, mowing. Um, we'll do some of the, the fancy stuff. So, you know, Rob really took charge of, for example, the landscaping up front. If we want to do that kind of work, that would be incumbent upon us and our staff. But any of the big stuff, I believe the city's going to do. I took a ride by the yesterday, like, so, gee, I said, what about the lawns and all that? Who's going to take care of that? The city, or is that something we have to hire out, or whatever? You didn't look at your contract for board? No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I could use the exercise. We got, we got a big surprise here. Now, I, I, I think the snow clearing is going to be covered on each of the individual staffs in their area. Um, for the for the very very kind of close proximity stuff. Generally, I think the city's going to continue to plow, but clearing the, the doors and the sidewalks will be like on the, the responsibility of each of the organizations. And that still has to be flushed out. There's still, I mean, really, we're still in the infancy. Remember, we started this exploration about a year ago, just looking and see whether or not it was feasible. We didn't really make a determination it was feasible until late summer, early fall last year. So that was September. We didn't do the, the announcement until October. So we're still you know, very early on in the process. In fact, I don't think all the leases and the, and the uh, leaseholder situation have been completed. So we're still, we're still pretty early on. And we've been getting you know, great information and support by, of course, I mentioned the state rep, but I didn't mention the mayor's office and his staff. Um, the school department, we were really working very closely with all these groups just to make sure it's an easy transition. All right, any other discussions? Anybody want to bring up? Okay. Uh, go for the next scheduled meeting. Our next scheduled meeting will be on the 3rd of April at 2 o'clock, another Monday. So uh, we'll see you then on April the 3rd. And we have a motion for adjournment. Yes. I make our motion. Okay, second. Okay. So vote. Everybody in favor? Aye. So vote. Aye. 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 Aye.